Desecrate God's name. Amen. Sanctification of the name of God is what happens when you lift up your hands and you lift up your voice and you call upon the name of the Lord and you praise ye the Lord. How many know God is good? Amen. How many know he is worthy to be praised? When you praise God and you give God the glory, you are sanctifying his name. The opposite is called desecration of the name. Chilul Hashem. That's what happens when we complain and we mutter. And when we live a way that we're not supposed to live. And it gives God a bad name. Amen. That's desecration of the name of God. Yeshua said, pray, hallowed be thy name. In other words, in your prayer life, in your walk with God, you've got to start off with sanctifying the name of God. And how do you do that? By praising him. No matter what we're going through. Amen. Like Job. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Hallelujah. Amen. So whatever we're going through, whatever you're going through, whatever difficulty the devil and the world and the flesh are throwing your way, the only thing that we can do to get the victory is to sanctify, hollow the name of God by lifting up your voice and saying, I praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Give the Lord some praise today. Amen. And when we do that, when we all clap like that, you know what we're doing? We're actually, this is a biblical doctrine, we are sanctifying the name of God in our midst. Amen. Amen. In the middle of the congregation of God's people, we're sanctifying his name. The kids see it, the adults see it, and most importantly, God hears it. Amen? Amen. Amen. One more time, let's put our hands together. Oh, look the crowd and I, we praise you. We thank you for that. So actually, can you keep, do me a favor and get me a little glass of that, uh, just water and some of the rest of Praise the Lord. Welcome to our first, to me, this is our first real service. We had services, we had our grand opening in Rosh Hashanah. That was our first real service. But that's a special time of the year. It's the holidays, praise the Lord. Wonderful time with the sukkah. Holidays are a special time. Amen. 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 A lot of work. We had the tent outside, praise the Lord. We blew the shofar. But besides the high holidays, this is the first regular service I feel like we've had, even though we've had others. Amen. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The devil has fought what we're doing. Amen. And some of you that have been stalked in a long time, you say amen. Amen. The devil is fighting what we want to do and what we have been doing. Praise the Lord. And uh, this is our first uh, monthly uh, special service. We're going to be doing this once a month. Praise God, we're going to have a special service. Uh, and then afterwards, we're going to somebody's house, praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody's house to fellowship and eat food and socialize and break bread together. Amen. Just like they, they did in Acts 2 and 42. They continued steadfastly in the apostle doctrines and in prayers and in fellowship and breaking of bread. Amen. 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 Praise God. And... Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself, so I'm going to talk about this a little bit in the sermon. But uh, I, I've been in prayer as far as uh, during this horrible pandemic lockdown with all the mental anguish and stress and everything that goes along with what's been going on in the world for the past, what is it, two years now, three years almost? Yeah. Two years at least. Um, March. Two, over two years now, right? Praise God. In March. In March will be the, the official... And um, I just prayed, and I talked to, to Sean about this a couple weeks ago, that I felt like we needed encouragement. I can use some encouragement. How about you? Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, I can use some encouragement. I can use some encouragement. Amen. Hallelujah. And I felt, 
I, I felt this from the Lord, but I felt something different that I've never felt from, from, from the Spirit of God. And that was that God did want, not want me to advertise this online or anywhere. Can you say praise God? Praise Which God. is very different for me. I come from a, a revival-minded pastor that ingrained in, in our DNA to witness and pass out tracts and invite everybody from the streets. But I felt specifically from the Lord that we should invite people, but only people through word of mouth. Not through online banners, not through flyers on the laundromat, not from door to door, not from ads in the paper, etc., etc. But only word of mouth. Amen. Everybody is in free to invite whoever you want to, whoever you know. You can say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I feel like this is something that needs to be done Word of mouth, and God, I'm sure, has his reasons for that. Praise the Lord. Um, maybe it's a little bit more under the radar, but I think God's blessing it. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And so I want us, this is going to be the first of what I want to do once a month. And the only reason, the main reason, the primary reason, the most important reason is for encouragement. I feel like we, God's people, all over, we all need some encouragement. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise this isn't about numbers. This isn't about uh, bragging to some other Christian person about, you know, what our church service was like or this and that. This is all for the edification and encouragement of our people. Can you say praise God? Praise We're a unique bunch. Those of us believers that believe also in the commandments. But it's, it's rapidly growing. I've Last week I took a call from a couple from Georgia, and then I had to reschedule this week with another couple in Tennessee, and people come out of the woodworks every single week. I get calls and emails and video conferences all the time from people across the country that want what we want. About a month ago, there's another lady somewhere down south that has to start writing this down, and praise God, her and her husband, same story, Pentecostal, apostolic background, they discover the Sabbath. They discover uh, all these blessings and commandments in the Torah. They have blessings with them. How many know that the commandments are not a burden? Amen. Amen. It's not a burden to love your neighbor as yourself. <laughs> it's a blessing, right? Amen. The Sabbath, we've been, the church world has been brainwashed about the Sabbath. It's not some rigorous, horrible thing. It's a holiday. Amen. With everything that goes along with holiday, rest. Blessings, love, peace, food, food, <laughs> praise God, <laughs> all of it, amen. Which brings me to another point. We're having fellowship at our house afterwards, potluck next month. Someone else can host, whoever wants to volunteer. Praise the Lord. You can kind of <laughs> rotate. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it's potluck. I don't want the burden being on any one family. It's too, food is too high for that. Yeah. Prices are crazy right now. Yeah, they are. So this all needs to be potluck, <coughs> potluck style. Obviously, no pork, no shellfish, etc. But everybody needs to can pitch in, and all have a big fellowship and food and fellowship, and we can rotate whose house it's at. I would like to have, uh, like I said, once a month. But I would also like to have special speakers. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I would I don't want to put the pressure on the woman because there's already so much pressure. With the other stuff, Sister Sorry has been going like crazy getting stuff together at our house. So I don't want to put more pressure on the ladies, but I wouldn't mind having hearing from some of the ladies on a special topic. Maybe they can, you know, we could have a special set topic for someone to teach on. Yeah. Amen. Matter of fact, the sister from uh, Georgia, she said, you guys need a woman's club, a woman's group. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. With women only, no men allowed. They can talk about women issues and stuff like that. I second that. Amen. Amen. <laughs> so we're going to get something like that going because you all can talk with your amongst yourselves. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. And this is all about community. I, 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 I and you and we need community. Sometimes I wish I could just kick back and let somebody else do everything. But there's not a whole lot of places that meet our needs. Amen. Yeah. And so we've got to do it. Turn to your neighbor and say, we've got to do it. We've got to do it. Hallelujah. You have to do it already. It's on Hallelujah. 
Yes, Sister Sora wants to testify. Praise the Lord. Um, praise the Lord. I'm happy to be here. I asked my husband to specifically let me testify because. This is my. Hey, come to the front side. Oh. Uh, this is my first uh, service back uh, since being sick, and um, uh, I got very, very, very sick. Where, you know, me and my husband are crying and snotting and praying, and you know, you really have to trust your God at that point. Mm -hmm. And the doctors did say it was pneumonia, but they were trying to say it was something else. And, and uh, uh, well, I was bedridden for the longest I've ever been, about a month and a half. And uh, uh, I'm just going to publicly say, Brother Sean showed up at our door with a holla. Amen. Now, what you didn't know is I, I was born asthmatic. I don't, my lungs were not fully developed. This has been a lifelong thing. Um. So I really felt if I went into the hospital that it was not going to be good, you know. So I said, well, God, you know, this is when you really find out if you trust God. So I said, okay, God. My husband was praying. My daughter was locked out away from us, so she was upset. I mean, it was just a whole, you know, the, the whole thing came to screech at all. But during this, I, I told God, I said, well, you know, I have kids and I want you to touch my body. And the medicine that the Kaiser gave me was not working. That, that was the scary part. But the medicine was. So I said, okay, now I'm, you got to understand, I'm doing treatments every couple of hours. I was, I couldn't even, it was, it was bad. So I said, okay, God. We went to the doctor and uh, they gave us medicine that the news says is not supposed to work. And I thought, oh, and they gave us a money amount that we couldn't afford. It's like $500, something like that, $400. So we prayed again and said, okay, God, we need a miracle. And Kaiser paid for it in full. Amen. Which, Amen. if you believe the news, it, it's not supposed to work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I slowly started getting better. And uh, But at this time, God just put me on hold. All by myself and uh, I started to realize something um, mm. there are a lot of people in this valley that have been hurt and that say they're Christian and we're you know and with the computer we're getting so disconnected with each other uh, we just text and say well I'm praying for you and that's it mm -hmm. and if brother Sean wouldn't have come to my house I don't know what have ha what would have happened I believe that God sent you to us. You're, you know, God used you and your wife with that. So I said, God, you know, when I get out of this, I'm, I'm not going to waste any more time. Because we don't have much time. Mm -hmm. We really don't. And our kids don't have much time. They're bombarded to every day. I, you know. I was, the only thing I had was the computer, YouTube, you know, I, I, I'm just, I, I like talk, talk radio. That's how I was raised with talk radio. And I drive my husband nuts because he has to have dark and quiet. And I'm like, I have to have noise and light. <laughs> so, you know, we have that battle every night. And I said, God, heal my body, heal my body. And um, when I was getting better and I tried to go to the grocery store, it was kind of funny. But I could only shuffle my feet like I was 80. Every four steps, I had to stop. And my daughter was, Mom, are you okay? I'm not getting an electric cart. I'm going to push my body. I'm going to get better. Amen. But during this time, it struck me. I know so many people around me that say that we're Christian. But only one person showed up at my door. I never got a phone call, even from family, who were in the ministry, pastors. I never got a phone call. I'm sorry. I ne this isn't a guilt. M my neighbor, who I secretly fed during COVID, didn't even bring me a pot of beans. I said, God, where are we at? I feel the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. I come from a Jewish background and a Pentecostal background. 
the one thing my grand, my Jewish grandmother who got saved before she died, Jesus name, Acts 238, baptized. And that little old granny in the wheelchair was chasing people down and saying, you need to know Jesus. But the one thing that was cornerstone in Judaism and in the church that we're, we're teaching this because it's, it's going back was community, Amen. community in the eighties. If you got sick, you know, you'd have 12 Pentecostals at your door and you'd be doing the <laughs> shimmy not to answer it. Okay. I got you. I got your casserole. We're putting at your door. We know you're there, <laughs> but with the computer, God made me realize we have become, we have become disconnected with each other. If someone shows up at my door and my house is a mess, I'm like, yeah, what do you want? Uh-huh, uh-huh, God bless you. I'll pray for you right here. I'm like, no, come on in. You could talk to me while I'm doing my dishes. You need to see that I'm not perfect. You need to see my dirty dishes, and you need to see my kids running around with, you know, paint all over their faces. And But when I was sick, God, God put on me. We need community. And that's what's lacking in our churches. We need people that care about each other. It's great that you've been friends for 30 years, but is there, is there room for a friend that's new? I, I don't, you know, I, I'm really weird. You can tell me all these people that my mother, my grandmother knew, but I was mostly with my Jewish grandma. So I don't know these fifth generation, all these people. I'm, when I came into the Christian, I hope I'm okay, honey, but when I came into the Christian world, it kind of freaked me out because it was a total different culture. So I'm like, take a step back. CLC kind of freaked me out because it was a whole different thing, okay? You know, I'm used to my grandmother saying, oh, you come over, my house is not perfect, I'll feed you. I will force feed you if you come to my house. If you refuse, to me, that's an insult because when you come to my house, I want you to know that I love you. And that I'm going to give you what I can. So, you know, when I was sick, God really put upon my heart about community. It doesn't matter if we don't agree on the holidays. It doesn't matter if we don't agree on lifestyle. What matters is we agree on doctrine. We agree on that we need each other. This isn't a guilt to anybody. But when I was sick laying there, I said, God, you make me better. And this is going to be one of the things I'm going to tell everybody about, is that we need each other. I need you, and you all need us too. And that's okay. You know, my kids don't know that these people on YouTube are fake. So they start acting all crazy and loud and lola. And that's not reality. The reality is you helping a neighbor. The reality is you making time in your life for each other. So you know what? I thank God that I got sick because I never would have known how much I need others unless that happened. And, and I, I'm, I hope I'm not taking liberties, but so, you know, that we need each other, whether we go to the same church, whether we have the same lifestyle, whether we agree or disagree, whether we wear skirts down to the floor or, you know, we wear something else. The important thing is we need a community. Amen. And I am, I really feel blessed I'm here. Uh, I did get weak playing piano, but that'll leave soon. I'm taking my <laughs> But you know, I thank God that I'm here and I'm worshiping with you all and that you all are here. So Amen. this year, let's just reach out to each other. Don't be scared to call me. I'll probably miss it and call you back. I know that wasn't proper English. But, you know, I, I, I thank God for this year and the community that, that he has established. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord some praise for the rest of your family. Hallelujah. I think she preached half of what I was getting ready to preach. Amen. No, that's right on the money. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad she brought up what Sean did because I was going to bring it up too. <laughs> And it's just, to me, I mean, it's not about what a lot of people think church is about. Amen? Amen. Amen. When Sean showed up at my door, I, I just can't put it in words, Sean. That's what community is about. 
How many has been around the church world? There's a whole lot of flash in the pan. The whole, can I give it, can I share something, a story? Please okay. you know, I, from right, I'm from the valley, Central Valley guy. Baptized in Jesus' name, Elder Billy Andrews, Merced, mm -hmm. September 23rd, 1992. Leslie was a little, little kid. <laughs> well, we're five. Yeah. Seven, seven actually. Amen. But I lived in Modesto, so I went to the Modesto church there. And nothing, nothing bad about the church. Love of the keys. Amen. Revival church has always been a revival church. When I started attending, it was about 800 people, eight, eight around there when I left here. We're on 2,000. Praise the Lord. But I, I can remember being a, a new convert, and I wasn't able to go to my like home home church, which was 40, 40 miles away in Merced, where I was baptized because I worked and lived in Modesto and didn't have a reliable car. And I liked the vision they were, they were having at Modesto and the revival-mindedness. And so I, I went to Modesto. I loved Brother Keys' revival you know, vision for end time revival. So I... I started going to there, praise the Lord. And again, this is not a criticism of that church. But it's a big, it was a big church, is what I'm trying to get at. Big church. And I can remember being only in church for a few weeks, praise God. And I remember going to a beautiful Sunday morning service where everybody's dressed in their finest clothes. I'm, I'm kind of iffy on the finest clothes at this point in my walk with the Lord. Because not everybody can afford finest clothes. Mm -hmm. Amen? You know, the church world's kind of, you know, there's the... The, the finest apparel, then there's the, sort of the jeans and flannel. And you know what? Maybe that's a good thing. Praise God. Because you go too fancy schmancy, and not everybody can afford that. And that's just a little side note. I used to get my clothes from Goodwill. Praise God. It's still a good stuff. Still a great place. Still, <laughs> still great finds at the thrift stores. Amen. And so I was at church in my polyester suit. Praise God. Best thing I could find. Amen. And I figured this huge church of 800 people, which for me looked like, you know, TVN. I, I don't, I'm coming from the, the punk rock world into the church. I don't know from church. Praise God. Everybody, it's all fancy and everything. And I, I go through the Bible study. It's a great service, wonderful time of worship. Everybody praises the Lord together in the altar. And then everybody goes out to eat. How many know that tradition in the Pentecostal churches and Christian churches in general? Yes. You, you go out to eat, and that's a beautiful thing. You get a, uh, you know, they didn't have black bear back then, but Denny's or whatever, you know. And so everybody's getting ready to go out to eat. You know, everybody's rejoicing in the Lord. And I'm like, yeah, I want to go out too. Somebody? <laughs> Hello? Somebody? And please invite me to KFC too. Um, I want to go to Marie Callender's. They don't have those anymore here. <laughs> Amen. And I figured out of 800 people, somebody would invite me to church, to fellowship, after church. <laughs> and one by one, families left and left and left and left and left. Until literally everybody was gone. And nobody invited me to go out to fellowship. And I remember they have a prayer room, an upstairs a men's prayer room and a downstairs women's prayer room. That you can access 24 hours a day uh, at the church there. At least back in the day you could. And I remember I was in one of the prayer rooms all by myself. And you talk about just wanting to crawl into a corner and cry and have a pity party. I was so heartbroken that nobody in this big, huge revival church even invited me out to go to KFC. At the very least. I couldn't believe it. And I did start to have a pity party. And I was just like, I don't, I don't even know my car was working. It was always breaking down. So I don't even think I had a running car at that point. I probably just I walked everywhere. I said, what am I going to do? I'm in this prayer room. And the church is right on the freeway. There's an overpass the other side, which is the poor side of town. The Holy Ghost said, go across the overpass. And walk over to that. There's a building over there that I had seen. I didn't know what kind of building it was, but... Holy Ghost said, walk over to that building. I said, okay. Maybe God wants me to witness to somebody over there. I don't know. And uh, I walked over the freeway overpass, went to this plain building with, I didn't see any name on it. So the CC camera, closed circuit camera, looking at me, 
I walk up to the door and then finally I see what it is. It was some Freemasonic Lodge. I thought, Lord, mercy, what did God send me to this building? People are devil worshippers. Um, like, what in the world is going on? And I was too freaked out to like, I don't know if I knocked, but I just thought, why, am, why did the Lord send me here? Holy Ghost said, walk around to the side. Go around to the side. So I went from the front door, went around to the side, and went down the side of the building. Where was a brick wall. And I'm walking down the side of the building, and there's a window about this high. And it was kind of open. And then all of a sudden I heard, I'm walking by, like thinking, who are these satanic Freemasons? What are, they, what are they doing in there? All of a sudden I hear, hey! I'm like, oh my God, they're worshiping the devil. <laughs> They're using tambourines like we do. What is going on? And then I hear it again. Hey! I'm like, what is going on in there? And I get around to the front, right there on, um, I think it's six, Sixth and I right there. And there's a little storefront. And you, I opened up the front door, and there's a stairway leading to the second floor. There's nothing else there. It's the stairway going straight to the second floor. I'm like, what is going on in this place? There's no, it's dark. There's no, there's no people. And I'm like, okay, well, Holy Ghost said to come here, I'm going to walk up the stairs. So I walk up these old wooden stairs, and I get to the top, and there's these parlor doors. It's kind of swing, you know, both like a, you know, old saloon doors things. I'm like, what's going on in there? Couldn't see anything. So I, <laughs> I went through and opened up, and lo and behold, it was a little African-American church. And, of course, when I opened the thing real quietly, everybody turned around and looked right at me. So I backed out, and then I got a little bit more courage, went back and sat on the back row, back pew, and just thought, okay, well, the Lord sent me here. I don't know why. I mean, they already got a church here. You know, obviously, it's not to witness to anybody. And there was only about 10 people in there, maybe. And there's a pastor and his wife who played the piano, and they kind of did all the hats, and there may be like a handful, maybe two families, and that's about it, you know, in there. But they're, you know, they're worshiping the Lord, doing their best, and testifying and this and that and then the pastor's wife got up and testified and she said I thank God that I've been baptized in Jesus name mm. I thought, what? <laughs> they baptize like we do <laughs> baptized in Jesus name and then the pastor got up to preach and he preached his sermon and about well towards the end of the sermon he just stopped and he said I almost gave up on my ministry last night. Basically is what he said. I'm paraphrasing. He said he prayed to God. He said, God, if you still have a ministry for me, send somebody new to our church tomorrow. He goes, and in walked this young man, which was me at the back of the church. And everybody turned around and looked. I didn't know what I was doing. I was just doing what the Holy Ghost said to do. And afterwards, I talked to him. He was an apostolic. But the Ari, I think it was his last name. But the Ari. Amen. And he's a, I think it was PAW. And he's just struggling to, to, to keep his work going. And the Holy Ghost, out of my calamity of, of fellows, no fellowship, <coughs> sent me over there to encourage him. Praise God. Amen. By following the Holy Ghost. I didn't know what I was doing. Just following the Spirit of God. God was able to encourage that pastor. Amen. That's what we're talking about here. Encouragement. And just letting the Lord lead us to encourage one another. It's all, it's all about community. Hallelujah. That pastor, Brother Ari, he needed community. He was pr praying and digging out a work for God's community. Praise the Lord. And I'm just trying to find community, and the Holy Ghost sent me. Praise God. Give God some praise today. I'm, I'm already starting to preach the message. Praise God. Before I get into any more, do we have any prayer requests today? Sister Sorensen, can you tell that? Our neighbor, Lori, she, uh, so. Yes, our neighbor, Lori. In the name of Jesus' name. Anybody else need to sick? What baby? Uh, the Jewish. For Jewish, amen. Let's pray for the Jewish people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, our country. Let's pray for our country, Abigail. Amen. Praise God. You know, 
there's a Jewish prayer called the Amidah, and in there's, there's a heart to pray for healing. There's always somebody that needs healing. Somewhere around the world, somebody needs healing. And so let's keep those that are sick in prayer for healing in the name of Yeshua. Let's pray for our community. Everybody say our community. Our community. Praise God. This is our community. For better or worse, <clears throat> we're here. That's right. Hallelujah. And we're all we got here. So let's pray for our community and that the Lord would help us and create that, that safer space. Go ahead. I want to pray for my friend Kaylee because she used to believe in Jesus and now she does not because she stopped going to church. So I hope that she can go to church and believe in God more. Yes, amen. Let's pray for Kaylee. Amen. Amen. Sure. Jesus' name. Let's all stand right now. Ah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Deliverance. Deliverance. Deliverance, yeah. Amen. I know a lot of people that need it. Amen. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I believe that. The, I was feeling that the other day for God to deliver us from, from all kinds of... We want God's protection. We want God's deliverance in the name of Yeshua. Let's pray right now in Jesus' name. Hashem Yeshua. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your kindness. For your spirit today, God. We pray for every petition we've just mentioned, oh God. For those that need to return to faith, God, help them, O oh Lord, to, to return, O oh God, in the name of Yeshua, and to uh, come to themselves, God, mentally, spiritually, emotionally, God. We pray for deliverance right now in the name of Yeshua. We pray that you would keep us delivered, God. Deliver us from evil and from every evil thing out there, O oh God. Keep your hedge of protection around your people. We plead your blood to take out in the name of Yeshua, O oh God. We pray for this country, O oh Lord, in Jesus' name, B'Shem. Yeshua God, we pray, God, that you would keep your hand upon us. We believe, O oh Lord, that you're going to take us in this world and out of this world in victory, O oh God, that we're here to keep the powers that be restrained until you call us back, O oh Lord, in the name of Yeshua, and give us victory until that time. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. And everybody say amen. amen. Let's give God some praise today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Lord bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. We will be having regular services on a weekly Sabbath schedule at 1 p.m. Praise God. And so the doors will open around 12, 1230 for prayer. Um, the services will start at 1 p.m. This is going to be a once a month thing. And we might switch it up. We might do a, a Friday night. We might do a Saturday day. But we'll have the monthly thing with the fellowship afterwards. Maybe we'll just try a few things and see what works best for everybody and uh, how each, each, each one goes. This is a Saturday night. Maybe next time we can try a Friday night or a Saturday day or something like that. Just kind of rotate and see what works. Amen? Amen. I'm a big believer in it. Hey, try it out. If it works, do it again. If it doesn't work, quit doing it. <laughs> Praise God. It doesn't work. Hey, I learned that at uh, my job. Praise the Lord. Um, if you get a chance, we do have a new website name. Uh, the first one I picked was so hard I couldn't even remember it. <laughs> and I just finally went with my wife's suggestion, which is the littleshul.com. Little shul. It's really cute. Yeah. Shul. Does anybody know what a shul is? Everybody no, know what a shul? I spell that. It's shul, S-H-U-L. It's Yiddish for sanctuary or synagogue. It's Yiddish for synagogue. It really is from German shula, which is school. Um, and we learn in the synagogue. And so we, the Yiddish term is shul. And that's when Orthodox Jews will say they're, they're going, to, going to shul, going to synagogue on Friday or Saturday is or whatever that? day. Is it dot or dot com? It is dot com, I believe. I think I think there's another one with the dot org. Um, I don't have a somebody can look that up, but I believe it is dot com, Little Shul. Since I've changed the name to Little Shul, and people can actually remember that, we've got people going to the site all the time, and they're actually going back to the Facebook site and becoming a, a following our Facebook page also. Praise God. And so littleshul.com, and it's, there's only one page right now, but I'm going to get it built up. We'll have more and more. We'll put a, 
you know, uh, what we believe in the schedules, and I'll link it to the Facebook and all that type of thing. Um, we've also got the Facebook page, uh, of, which is Mishkan Ruach. That's the name of the, the tabernacle. Once we get uh, a little bit more flesh, we'll get the sign on the wall, on the window here that says Mishkan Ruach. It'll have the website, loshul.com. And I'm still trying to pick out a, a, f a phone number. I'm trying to get one of those, you know, alphanumeric ones, like, you know, 209, you know, Mishkan or something like How that. L-I-L-S-H-U-L. I've tried it. It's not available because I'm using Google Voice, but um, I'm still trying to play with the numbers and try to get something catchy that people can remember because you got to remember it. And so we'll have that on the sign right here. But again, regular services will be at 1 p.m. on Saturdays and uh, you know, three, three times a month. But this will be the, the once a month. Again, I'm not advertising our monthly get-togethers. Um, this is kind of for us, and we want to get the word out sort of like under the radar, word of mouth, the old apostolic way, really. You know, they didn't have all this direct mail and the book of Acts and so forth. So, word of mouth, please feel free to invite whoever you want to. And uh, this is whoever you feel needs to be here or should be here or would want to be here. And uh, uh, you guys can vet whoever, you know, you want to invite and so forth. Um, and that, I believe God's blessing that. Amen? Amen. Praise God. So, uh, check that out. Um, we'll be adding more stuff to that website. We also have the YouTube. Um, I, I do record the services it's very strange, like when I was pastoring in the Bay Area, you know, two different churches I started there, and you people come to you after service, and hey, I gotta talk to you about, you know, my marriage, or I gotta talk to you about young person, going to young person stuff, you know, counseling people, uh, going to people's houses and counseling them. I'm basically doing that right now across the country with people that have special needs, and they're coming to me for pastoral counseling. So, so I'm basically like pastoring people in like Oklahoma and you know, Tennessee, and they call me, and sometimes they text me a lot, <laughs> and, uh, you know, which is fine, but, you know, uh, there's a, what I'm trying to say is there is a remote community also of people coming out of apostolic backgrounds that are loving the Torah, loving the, the Shabbat, and all the blessings that go along with all of this, and so we do put the video services online for people to see. Some people, this is their only church they're getting. What we do here and put online is uh, that's like the only, as far as apostolic and messianic combined, that's, they're only getting it from videos online and so forth. And most of the time they have to go to other you know, groups and stuff. Um, so there is a virtual community. So I try to feed the flock out there also with our videos and so forth. Um, we are on iTunes, but it's a bunch of older. I do have like a couple hundred sermons on iTunes. I don't know how because the link is broken to my servers. Somehow we're still getting in the top ten when you type in Messianic in iTunes. Yeah. I and mean, we're up there for year, we're up there for years in the top ten. There's a coveted if you ever study iPod, you know, data and stuff like that. And you open up iTunes or iPod podcast on your computer and you type in a search word and you get a uh, you get a response of like all the the top ten, really. And I think it actually extends out to twenty or thirty sometimes. But there's the top ten. There's people that write, you know, articles, how to get in the top 10 of podcasting, you know, top 10 on iTunes, your name will show up in the top 10. We were showing up in the top 10 for years when you typed in either A, Messianic, or B, Pentecostal, or B, Apostolic. I mean, we were right up there with uh, Brother Urshan's churches in the top 10. We were right up there when you typed in Apostolic. When you typed in Messianic, we are right up there with Sid Roth. He's always number one. Sid Roth, he's not super messianic, but he's Jewish. But, um, and there's like a, a few others that are up there. Um, and then you typed in Pentecostals and we would show up. I've kind of got a bunch of back end digital things that transfer web hosts and do a new path and this and that. But I went on the other, there the other day and we were still up there. So I don't know how it's going, but we are on iTunes. I've been online since about 2007 or eight or something like that. So there's a bunch of older sermons you can listen to on there also. Um, so we really wanna, I'm, I really, there's a, there's a community out there, coast to coast, that's what I'm trying to tell you. And there are people literally just like us. And uh, like my wife and I just had a video conference last week of a couple, and she's just gung-ho, man. She's, you know, she's loving the commandments. She wants my wife to teach her how to make challah bread. All kinds, and she's way out there in Georgia. And her husband, he's really good guy. He's getting into it. So there's people out there, there's a virtual community. So. 
Um, you know, we're on Facebook and YouTube and all that, so we try to keep it, keep the people out there connected somehow also. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Because everybody needs community. Everybody wants community. This is what God is doing in prophecy. Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. It shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. The mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted above all the hills. And all Gentiles will flow into it. People shall say, come, let us go to the house of the Lord. From out of Jerusalem shall go forth the Torah. And then it goes into the verses about the tribulation right after that. Before the tribulation, before the catching away of the church, whenever that happens, wherever we're caught up to. I mean, that's another subject. <laughs> Hallelujah. But before that happens, there's going to be revival of believers that are latching on to Torah. And that's Isaiah. You can say, praise God. Praise God. God gave us a revelation of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Praise God. Amen. God gave us a revelation of baptism in the name of Yeshua, or Jesus. Amen? Amen? I prefer Yeshua, but Jesus is valid. Praise God. Revelation of the oneness of God. Yehud Hashem. There's only one. And now God's giving people a revelation of the Torah, which is really what God's trying to get us to. So we have the Holy Ghost to empower us to get the Torah. Nobody's perfect, and we're not saved by it. But it's still a commandment, and it's still part of holiness, and it's still blessing. Everybody say blessing. Blessing. Each commandment in the Torah is like a grape. The Torah is a cluster of grapes, and in each grape, there is sweet juice that is blessing. There's the commandment, but in that mitzvah, there's blessing, like the juice in the grape. And when you keep the Torah, there are blessings that go along with it. Give God some praise today. Amen. Um, let me move on. Um, I don't have any other special announcements, um, but next week we'll be having regular service at 1.00. And so we're going to go right ahead into the word of the Lord. It's already 6.30. Praise God. We've got good fellowship afterwards. I want us to be encouraged today. Praise God. And I want us to be edified in the Lord. And uh, I believe we are recording. Let me just double check. Everything is on. Stop recording. That's good. Okay, cool. That is on. Praise God. So people can be encouraged all over the country. If you have your Bibles, please stand today. If you don't have your Bibles, please stand today. <laughs> if you have your cell phone, please stand today. I use my cell phone a lot for the Bible these days. It's right here. I'm turning around. I cannot believe how big Ari is in it. Praise God. All right. Very familiar passage of scripture, praise God. This in chapter 16 of Matthew. I'll just go ahead and read from the King James. It's just familiar to everybody. So. And Simon Peter, this is verse 16, chapter 16. And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. Just a note here, the term Son of God in Judaism is an idiom for the king of Israel. It's not a second person, it's the king of Israel. The son of the living God. And Yeshua answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Verse 18. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock will I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven that is actually rabbinic terminology for the rabbinic authority it's all been given to the apostles amen they are the ones with the authority in the Torah praise God but verse 18, I want to read that again. And I say also unto thee that you are Peter, and upon 
This rock will I build my ecclesia, which King James puts church, but the real word is ecclesia, which is a Greek word, which is a loan word from Kahal in Hebrew. I'm translated here as church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it, and mikra in Hebrew. Amen. I want to pre preach to you today on this subject, the secret weapon of community. The secret weapon of community. How many does it help me preach today? Amen. Let's ask the Lord to bless the remainder of the service and edify and empower each and every one of us with the word of the Lord today. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we come before you today, God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for these precious fellowshipping people here today, God. We cannot live for God without you. We cannot live for God without each other today, O oh God. We pray that you would bless each and every one of the members of the body of Messiah here present and who will hear this online and see this online. We pray, God, that you will help us to receive from your word and from your spirit. Help us to receive that word down into our hearts down into our soul, down into our mind, into our heart of hearts, uh, to where it changes us uh, and transforms us, oh God, and delivers us and empowers us uh, and helps us to live differently, God, and better for you, God, in the future and days to come. We pray, God, that your word would have free course. Anoint me as your oracle to speak your words, oh God, in the name of Yeshua. And everybody say amen. amen. Give God some praise today. Bless you, beautiful name. Hallelujah. I'm going to do something that's been bothering me. I'm supposed to do this before service. You guys can see behind the veil here. I love this thing. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh. <clears throat> Hallelujah. The secret weapon of community. We are in a time that Paul prophesied about of perilous times. How many know that to be true? The powers that be out there in the world are making their move that we read about in the books of prophecy. Amen? Praise God. Now, if they knew what, what was good for them, they would actually be trying to not do what was in the Bible. Because if they actually knew what happens after they try to institute the Antichrist system and the Mark of the Beast and all that, they would know that their punishment's coming right after that. So really what they should be doing is doing everything in their power to not institute a Mark of the Beast. Amen. But nevertheless, they are going for the gusto. They're going for it. They are trying right now to implement uh, the mark of the beast and the totalitarian one world system of government uh, around the world that we read about in, book, in the book of Revelation. They are honest to goodness giving it their 110% shot. That does not mean that they will accomplish what, they've try, what they're trying to do. Ultimately, God has the final word. He said, praise the Lord. God can say, uh-uh, Antichrist, your time is not yet. You're getting a little bit ahead of yourself. You're getting the cart before the horse. It's not your time yet, Antichrist, and put a kibosh on the whole thing and put it on hold for who knows how long. Or God can say, it's time. And the time is now. We will all just have to watch and pray and stay vigilant and keep our lights brightly burning to be ready for whatever is going to happen. Can you say amen? amen. But whether it is going to happen or if God is going to put the pause button on the Antichrist uh, uh, works that he's trying to do right now, we are living in perilous times. I, I never thought that uh, it would have come so quickly as it did with the whole 
pandemic, and I'm, I'm going to call it that because they put thousands of manpower hours into this. It, it was planned. Amen. And they have ulterior motives and goals for what they're doing right now. And I, I never would have thought, I remember right when it started, I was working in Oakland, uh, at, right by Jack London Square there. And there's a lot of Asian people I work with, and they, you know, they have relatives on the other side of the Pacific and this and that. And they were very much attuned into what was happening in China and in Asia. And they were seeing all kinds of reports of sickness and so forth. And they were, they were on high alert. Can you say praise God? And they, they, they were not in a state of denial. Uh, and I remember seeing this video uh, that's probably been taken down by now of when the Chinese uh, totalitarian government forcibly locked in everybody in their apartments and they literally welded these doors shut at, and somebody with the camera took their 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 iPhone or whatever uh, their white way or whatever they use over there and they walked through their house out to the balcony of their little apartment and these apartments are these skyscrapers with thousands of people crammed into these these apartments uh, and this was I don't know how, how long they've been shut in I think it was a few weeks they had already been locked literally locked into their houses and in the middle of the night, the guy walks out, and you can hear thousands of people screaming in agony at the top of their lungs, just out on their balcony, just screaming because their minds were breaking and their emotions were being attacked and their soul was being attacked with the psychological stress of being locked in their apartments against their will and turned into prisoners. Thousands of people. I never, it sounded like the gates of hell. Amen. The devil is smart, and the people that work for him are smart, and they understand the psychological and the emotional impact of separating people. Let me tell you something. I, 2012, I did a three-month series on the New World Order and the End Times, and I've read the Department of Homeland Security's documents, and I've read their uh, declassified, well, now it's declassified, I think, uh, papers on, on talking about uh, monitoring preachers and monitoring people in these camps and, and looking at the little cliques that form and sending in uh, covert people that act like they're Christians just to infiltrate. And they understand these groups that form and the people that speak out against the totalitarianism and try to form resistance. And they understand how social people work and they network and they form uh, ties and community. Can you say amen? amen. And they have deliberately and do deliberately plan to attack those personal ties, those personal bonds between human being to human being and groups of human beings to other groups of human beings. And they're smart. They, they're, the devil is wise. He's got wisdom uh, that is unclean. It is the wisdom of the dragon. It's the wisdom of the world. And the people that follow him have that same wisdom. And they understand all you do is sever those ties of people with people and destroy their bonds. And you can make them like those people in China. Everybody say amen. Yeah. Satan understands the power of human connection. Amen? People need people. Isn't there an old 70s song that says something like that? People that need people or something. I don't know. Listen, that's good. Amen. People need human engagement. Can you say hallelujah? Hallelujah. People have to. Let me tell you, some of my favorite times at church sometimes is the fellowship afterwards. Now, don't get me wrong. I still want to lift up my hands and praise God. And I still want to hear the preaching and the teaching and the word of God. But sometimes you don't get your breakthrough until you go to fellowship. There have been times where I've gone to church, said amen to the preaching, shouted hallelujah, worshiped during the song service, even got up in the choir and did a little jig. And I still didn't get my breakthrough. I thought, oh, God, I'm still, there's something still there. It's just I can't get that breakthrough. And I go out to Denny's afterwards with some good godly people, and we laugh and we eat and fellowship. And in the middle of eating eggs over easy, and drinking iced tea, literally in the restaurant, I will get my breakthrough. 
It's happened before. And I didn't get it in the worship. I didn't get it in the altar. I didn't get it in the shout. I didn't get it in the preaching. But fellowshipping with God's people gave the deliverance. Give God some praise right now. You know, we talk about communion. The word communion in Greek is koinonia. I'm probably butchering the pronunciation of that. Sometimes it's translated as fellowship. Fellowship with your brothers. You know what fellowship is, right? We're all fellows in the same ship. Hallelujah. Amen. Fellowship. But it's the exact same Greek word translated also as communion, as in communion with God. Communion with God and fellowship with your brother go hand in hand. How can you love your brother whom you, how can you love God whom you have not seen if you cannot love your brother whom you have seen? Amen? Some people use the analogy of the cross, although it's probably a straight beam. But there is a horizontal and a vertical relationship in living for God. I think the Shema encapsulates that better. What's the first and greatest commandment according to Yeshua and all the Jews around the world? Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, all thy strength. Amen? That's your vertical relationship with God. Yeshua said the second commandment is like unto the first. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. That's the horizontal relationship in your walk with God. Amen. How can we love our God when we haven't even seen? And we can't even love our brother or sister who we have seen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeshua said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. Amen. One of the few new mitzvot that Yeshua brought. Praise God. Which stresses the importance of the horizontal aspect of our walk with God. Right there, Yeshua, God Almighty, tells us that your relationship with brothers and sisters in the body of Christ, in the body of Messiah, is just as important as your relationship with God. Hallelujah. If you don't forgive your brother, God will not forgive you. If you show mercy to your brother, 70 times 7, God will show mercy to you. That's how much importance God puts on our relationship with one another. Amen? Praise God. Community is central, central to living for the Lord. Praise God. When Yeshua initiated the church, quote-unquote, with Peter there, he said, upon this rock will I build my, King James says, church, right? That's a really another historical thing. We'll go into the history of that word. <laughs> the Greek word is ekklesia, ekklesia, which was essentially a called-out assembly of people, people, where they were called out of their homes to assemble in a public arena. In Greek times, they did that on a regular basis, and it was sort of like a town hall where everybody got a, a voice. Joe Blow could go up there and get up on the mic, if they had mics, and just air his grievances of the community or whatnot. It was a little bit egalitarian. Where normally, people wouldn't be able to speak, but they could speak at the Ecclesia. But it was literally, if you think back in the old times, they didn't have metropolises like we do, necessarily more village agrarian, and people were called out of their homes to assemble someplace. So there's a little bit of a loan word there from the Greek, but really it's a loan word from the Jewish tradition, which also has its equivalent word. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. And let's go to Leviticus 23 real quick here. Hallelujah. This is... Leviticus chapter 23 it's talking about the Sabbath six days shall work be done but on the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest 
And at King James it says a holy convocation. And it is holy Kodesh. The word convocation there is Mikra, which is a called out public meeting, the place of rehearsal or assembly. So essentially, ecclesia is a loan word from the Hebrew Mikra, which has the exact same meaning. For many years, the Jewish people lived in little villages, little shtetls. And they had the rabbi, and they had the synagogue, and they had their little homes. How many see Fiddler on the Roof? <laughs> Think Fiddler on the Roof. Amen. When the Sabbath time came, Sabbath day, people came out of their little houses in the village, and they went to the synagogue, went to shul. The little shul. Praise God. And they assembled, they convocated. Why? Because Judaism teaches sacred community. Can you say amen? amen? Sacred community. Amen. We need community because it is a spiritual weapon that we can use in these perilous times to help save our soul. Give God some praise again right now. Praise the Lord. As I said before, we're in some crazy perilous times. You never know what's going to happen. You wake up, you almost hate waking up and looking at the news these days because you just don't know what kind of crazy stuff is going on in the world. I mean, your, our minds are blowing every single day. Like, you got to be kidding me. Like, really? That's happening right now for real? You just never know. Praise God. And again, as I said before, the, the enemy is wise and knows how to tear us down. Let me share with you this, praise God, uh, a few years ago, and I actually preached this once in, when I was pastoring in Fremont. God, how many believe that God can speak to us in dreams? As we get closer to the return of the Lord, we're going to have to rely on prophetic insight more and more. And it's going to give us insight into the written word of prophecy and the rest of the Bible. Praise God. But I believe there's things in prophecy we're not going to know until we get closer and closer. And as we get closer, we're going to be like, whoa, I never saw that. And God's going to just give us revelation on prophetic ver uh, verses. Amen? Amen? Praise God. We have to be tuned up for God to be able to speak to us through dreams. And some people have waking visions. How many ever had one of those? It's powerful. It's like God gives you like a whole two-hour movie in a split second. You see it and you know it. Amen. We have to rely on the gifts of the Spirit in operation in these end times for our edification and our salvation. It's gonna help. It's, we're going to need it to be saved. We're going to need it for direction. We're going to need it to do, know what to do on any given day and situation. God, we've got to have God's prophetic Spirit working in us. Can you say hallelujah? Amen. Amen. Because God can deal with us in dreams. A while back, this is a, I shared this with uh, one of the ministers online. We had this great, big ministry, Russ Dizdar, just passed away. We've lost a great prophetic teacher. Um, I shared this with him, and he was pretty pretty uh, amazed by what the Lord uh, dealt with me about. So just um, give me a few more minutes. I'm going to bring this home here in a minute. But uh, a while back, I had a dream. This is going to sound crazy. Hallelujah. This is going to sound out there. But the Holy Ghost gave me a dream, and I saw Satan himself. It wasn't a man. It wasn't a big pterodactyl dragon. But I saw the dragon. I saw it. <laughs> And it was not like the English Lord of the Rings dragon. It was, and I'm not saying this to offend any culture or anything like that, but it was identical. What, what I saw, this was back in 2000, I want to say 15. It was, an, it was a Chinese dragon. It looked identical to the dragons that have been pictured and illustrated in China for thousands and thousands China is the land of dragons. There's tons of them. It was not a big, you know, lizard-like reptile with wings. It was a snake that was floating in air going back and forth like this. A thick snake coiled like that. 
floating and swimming through the air. And it had those whiskers, those catfish whiskers on it. Round face, and it had the catfish whiskers. And it was, it was like it was swimming, but it was in the air. And as I saw this thing, I knew it was Satan himself. And I didn't feel some sort of spiritual attack with red eyes or anything like that. Some sort of fangs or goblins, sort of fear or anything like that. As I saw this thing swimming back and forth, I felt the most unbelievable hopelessness you could ever feel. The most unbelievable depression and absolute loss of all hope. We're talking rock bottom despair to where every emotion in your heart and soul was just drained out of you to where you felt so low, so rock bottom, so full of despair, so absolutely smothered in your hope without any hope that you just didn't even want to fight. You just wanted to give up. It wasn't a, it wasn't a frontal attack of just, just the devil attacking. It was Satan attacking the emotions. It was an absolute drain on all hope of hope. And the Holy Ghost told me, or let me know rather, Satan is a master of emotions. Satan himself is a master at manipulating your emotions. He doesn't come with a pitchfork and a red tail like they do in horror movies. He gets to your spirit. He makes you wake up and just want to put the covers back over your head. He makes you just want to cry in the corner and where you're... Your mind feels so stressed out, it's, you feel like you're going to implode because you've got no one to turn to and you're, you're, you're drained of any kind of hope in just utter despair. You talk about rock bottom. Satan knows how to go in and drain your emotions till you don't even fight back. You yes, say amen. amen. And a big part of that is isolation. Let me tell you, there's a reason they put criminals in solitary confinement. They go crazy in there if they aren't already. You can take a normal human being and put them in the hole, lock them up in solitary confinement. They will go crazy. They will lose their mind. Because that's what isolation does. And the prison, people that run the prisons know the effect of that, how it will affect their emotions. Satan knows the effect of cutting all your relatives and friends and church people and co-workers and isolating you. He knows the emotional effect of that. It is a demonic weapon of the enemy. Loneliness, hopelessness, despair, panic attacks. When you're in, in the middle of the night thinking, how is it going to work out? What's going to happen tomorrow? I don't even know how we're going to make it. I've had them. I think a lot of people have had them the past two years especially. I know people that have committed suicide recently. And it's all over. Now you see, it's been happening. People are saying the suicides are up. Now these celebrities are killing themselves. And now people are starting to pay attention to the news. But it's been happening. Men's hearts are failing them for fear. It's an attack of the enemy. It's a very intentional attack. It's a planned, intentional, deliberate attack. But I'm here to tell you today. But there is a secret weapon. Paul talks about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We war not after the flesh, but we wrestle with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness. You know that verse? 
He talks about putting on the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the girdle of, amen, is it truth? Hallelujah. The shield of the spirit to quench the fiery darts, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. There is another weapon in your arsenal of spiritual warfare, and that secret weapon is community. The devil knows it, and he attacks it and cuts you off limb by limb from everyone around you until your own, your mind is in a solitary confinement and you don't know who to turn to. You don't know how you're going to make it. You don't know who to talk to to even get encouragement or some little pin light ray of hope. I'm talking to somebody right now. The darkness and the depths of despair is an attack of Satan himself. He knows your emotions, how they work. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of these satanic rock stars making music out there, they got the most emotional music you ever heard, man. And they're worshiping the devil, a lot of these guys. Some of it sounds pretty. But they're following Lucifer. And he knows how to strum the chords. Just right. To make you feel happy or to bring you down. Hallelujah. Remember, before I got saved, I'm just going to share my testimony a little bit. This was literally a couple days. Actually, I think it was the day before I got the Holy Ghost. I dropped some acid. I turned on some Pink Floyd. And that was a song I heard a million times. And it was like the, the, the floor broke out underneath me. And broke open and there was no bottom to it. The amount of depression that I was feeling from this music while I was on, under the influence of psychedelics. Uh, it was the most unbelievable depression and despair I had ever felt in my life. And it was written by a bunch of guys. Singing about Lucifer Sam. Amen. The devil is a master emotion manipulator. But I'm here to tell you today, hear me now, we have a secret weapon to come against that. There is a weapon of spiritual warfare that is the secret weapon against what I'm talking about, and that is the weapon of community. Amen. It is a spiritual weapon of our warfare. The devil wants to isolate your mind, body, soul, spirit, and everything until you just give up. He's not looking for a, a fight. He's looking to get people just to give up. And it's called community. Community is the weapon that destroys isolation and depression and fear. Hallelujah. You can walk into the house of the Lord feeling way down here. And even if you don't cut up the rug in the front, even if there aren't thousands of people laying hands on you, which I don't think we should probably be doing that anyway. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing. Praise the Lord. Even if you're just still, you know, you, you got your problems, you, you, you got your, you got your issues. We all got our issues. Just because you go to church, don't mean you're 100% perfect at the end of service. But the fact you can walk in, so praise the Lord, brother. How you doing? I we used to say in Modesto, "How goes the battle?" <laughs> oh, brother. When I woke up this morning, the Philistines were encamped all around about me. Amen. That's what we would say to each other in Modesto. How, how goes the battle? The Philistines were encamped around about my bed. But you know what? We're in the battle. And you're still fellowshipping. You don't have to be perfect to fellowship. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. We get this perfectionist mentality that we feel like maybe we have to be perfect for the preacher or perfect for to sing in the choir or be minister and this and that. God will perfect you while you're doing his work. That's right. You're not going to be perfect until you get to heaven anyways. That's right. And, you know, I know you're not perfect. I know I'm not perfect. You know you're not perfect. 
Your neighbor knows you're not perfect. We all know we're not perfect. So let's just forget the charade here that we're just like, you know, angelic robots. None of us are perfect yet. We got a lot of things we got to work out. And you can't let your imperfections stop you from fellowship, getting together with one another for worship, ministering to the Lord for, for the people of God. Amen. Don't think you have to be perfect. You say every great preacher you think you said get up there with this thousand dollar suit and this and that, they got all kinds of imperfections. They just glide, you know what I'm saying. They gloss it over real good. They put on the hmm, three hundred dollar tie. I got this for twenty bucks. I like it. <laughs> it's about ten years old. I love it. Or more. <laughs> Amen. We're not perfect. That's the beautiful thing about fellowship. Your brother and your sister don't expect you to be perfect. They just want to, they just want to shoot the breeze. We just want to fellowship. We just want to love each other. I told one of my friends down in the valley, I haven't seen him because just life. Man, I miss you, man. He's got all kinds of problems. I know. I got problems. I don't care. He's my friend. He's my best friend. One of my best friends. I don't care if someone's gone through divorce and they're going through this and that. You're still my friend. Yes. Right. Yes. And I miss him. You don't have to be perfect to love your brother and your sister in the fellowship. And it's a weapon. The devil can't get it. I, I'm closing now. You ever seen those uh, pictures of like the Roman legions? And I don't know. There's probably a term for it where they would make like a shield. They would all put their shields together and make like a dome. And they did that on some movie where they all, you know, they all move. I think the Romans did that. And like the devil tries to shoot his spears and arrows and they've got this perfect dome of shields that's fellowship the devil can't penetrate it we can still fall and trip up but guess what your brother falls and trips up you're still my friend you're still my friend you're still my brother mm -hmm. so my sister mm -hmm. i don't expect you to be perfect amen mm -hmm. hallelujah we've got to stay knit and encouraged amen we encourage one another Praise God. It's encouraging just to see you all. Hallelujah. It's just it's encouraging just to be together. And that is the secret weapon the devil don't want to. China knows that. Wow. Yes. And that's why they locked people up. The United States government knows that. Mm -hmm. The power of community. The devil knows that. So our spiritual weapon is say, I'm a devil. Mm -mm. You're not going to separate me. Mm -mm. You're not going to keep me from worshiping with my brothers and sisters. You're not going to keep me from getting that edification of love and camaraderie and socializing. Yeah. We're made for fellowship. I'm closing. I mean, Garden of Eden. God walked with Adam in the cool of the day. Talked with Adam. They fellowshiped. They just, oh, what's going on, Adam? How's those, uh, how's those Fuji apples, Adam? <laughs> Are they pretty ripe this year? It, it amazes me. We were talking about the older we get. The older I get, the simpler things. The simplest things are just like, oh, wow, my wife brought home, what did you bring home, the mint and thyme? Like, wow, I've never seen this, man. I'm used to get but one of the wild Mexican mint with the little furry whiskers on it. She brought home some different kind of mint. I'm like, wow, I've never seen this kind of mint. And she brought home thyme. It's just like, you know what, with all the gadgets we have, nothing. And we just all go back to the Garden of Eden. Wow, God made this kind of mint. That's awesome. <laughs> you know, we went to our dad's in Union City. He's got, he lives in a little double wide and nice little senior home. And in the back of the trailer, there's an apple tree. We went and picked apples. Beautiful. It was a blessing. Yes. Crisp day. We got a big old bag of apples. We're going back to the garden. It's simple things. I love that. It's, and that's what God did with Adam. Wow. How'd you like those figs right now? They're pretty good. You like the yellow ones or the purple ones? He fellowshiped with Adam. We are created for fellowship with God and with each other. We're not created to be... In iPads all the time. In iPads. <laughs> We're not created to be like Neo hooked up to the Matrix in a little cocoon all by herself. Mm 
-hmm. We're created to be intertwined and connected with each other. Let's all stand today. Hallelujah. We are all family. Some of us are physical family. Some of us are spiritual family. But we're all family. You say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We're all here for each other. Sean was here for my family, which I will never forget. We're all here for each other. That's the only reason I'm doing these services. And that's really the only reason God wants us to get together. We are family. We love each other. We're here for each other. We are strong together. And it's a weapon that's going to keep us. Give God some praise today. Hallelujah. Remember that this week as you go about your business. Stay. Let's stay connected. Call me. Text me. I'm hip to the digital age. <laughs> yeah, I got people from Georgia and Tennessee texting me. Rabbi, how do we see, celebrate the high holy days? Like, Man, you got like a whole year left. Don't worry, we'll get to that. <laughs> you know, uh, we've got to be stay connected, be connected. And uh, that is what's going to encourage us and give us victory against these perilous times. Amen. Let's give the Lord one more hand of praise today. Let's give the Lord to Hallelujah. Amen. Fellowship at our house afterwards. We've got spaghetti. Everybody bring your stuff. And we'll all meet up and have a good time of fellowship. Amen. Shavuot Tov. Shavuot Tov.